You're listening to the Be Chic University podcast, and I am your host, Brittany Ball. On this show, we discuss all things millennial, but some of my favorite topics are money advice, career moves, productivity hacks, and managing a side hustle from five to nine when you have a nine to five. You can find me in the DFW, but I'm a Midwest girl born and raised. I went to school for music business and arts management, focusing on entrepreneurship and marketing. Catch these golden nuggets on the Be Chic University podcast as we dig into the millennial lifestyle with a hint of professional chic advice from yours truly. Tune in weekly for fresh content and check out my blog 24-7 for even more at bechicu.org. Now, let's get into the episode. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to the Be Chic University podcast. Now, you know, I do have to apologize. I apologize. I apologize, you all, for pretty much going ghost for all of August. And I promise those were not my intentions. So it just so happened to be a very busy month. And I did not have enough time to put into the podcast as I want to. Um, I hope that it's reflective in the episodes that I give you all, but I put a lot of time into creating the content, recording, editing, creating um, the show notes on my blog and on the SoundCloud platform and the cover photo. And so all of that put together becomes very time consuming and I was unable to keep up with that for the last four weeks. Yes, I am not making this up for the last four weeks. It has been a bit of a struggle, so I had to take a break, but I am back and I'm happy to be on mic with you all, and I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. So just a few things that I have to get out of the way is what I did during that time. So where was I when I was on my mini hiatus and obviously still here at home because The coronavirus is still a thing, but yes, still at home, but really hunkering down on what I needed to focus on, primarily my real estate courses. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a while now, you know that I am very much so interested in being a real estate sales agent or realtor here in the state of Texas, but I have been working on my coursework for... A little over a year now but I only really count the last um, eight or so months when I found the program through the CE shop that I loved and it was a lot better than the last program that I was in and so I had to start over with my new coursework well I forgot that there was an expiration date on the courses and it was actually set for July 31st And magically, (laughs) the two courses that I had left actually had an extension placed on them without me knowing. I logged in one day during July and saw that I had an extra month um, added on to the time I was allotted to complete my coursework. So I had until August 30th. And when you um, listen to this, it will definitely be past August 30th, 2020. So I got it done, but it was literally up until the last moment. I took my last course exam on August 29th, so I was cutting it very close, and I passed you all. So I'm officially done with all of my coursework for my real estate license as a salesperson in the state of Texas. But that is just one part of the preparation process. I still have to prepare for the license exam, which is a culmination of all six courses that I took. And reviewing all of that content will be imperative before I take that exam. So I will keep you all updated as I continue on this journey. I hope that you actually care about this information because I keep sharing it. But I hope that someone out there is at least motivated to do this as um, I am because I still have a full-time job. I don't intend on leaving there anytime soon, but I do also have this desire to be more involved in the real estate industry, especially working for a property management company for a little under a year when I was studying for my graduate degree. 
So that took up so much of my time. And when I say it took up so much of my time, I literally was studying for hours and hours as if I was in a full day of classes at home every weekend for the month of August. And it was because I didn't pace myself well enough from January up until now when doing my coursework. So when it came close to the end of the expiration period, I had to really focus and not allow myself to do anything else as I finish up that coursework. So just another little side project that I'm doing, but something nonetheless that is still very time consuming that took me away from the podcast. But I'm back, you all. I fully intend on continuing the weekly episodes until the end of the season when I take a planned short break and then I'll come back. But I have still been thinking so much about the podcast. I have been outlining and brainstorming episodes for you all. So I do hope that you rejoin me now that I am back with new episodes. So uh, today I want to talk specifically about journaling. And I had brainstormed this topic a few weeks ago because I realized how therapeutic it had become for myself. But then I started to see even more benefits from it, especially with things that have been happening lately. So with the um, shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, that was so, so hurtful for me and um, such a sad time being someone who is from Wisconsin. I'm from Milwaukee, which is just 40 minutes north of Kenosha. Going through that and then also with the death of our Wakanda King, Chadwick Boseman, it has been draining still, even still, um, after all that we have been through just in this spring and summer of 2020. It is still exhausting. And so one of the things that I have definitely found success in healing in is journaling, but not only in those areas, but in other areas of my life, such as uh, my career, just relationships with others, and just looking to find some clarity in my thoughts. I am still working at home, and although my husband has to go to the office as if it's a regular working period, um, we are still very much so affected by the coronavirus because I am working from home, and I'm alone a lot of the time, and I'm someone who's used to being around a lot of people, so I'm in my thoughts a lot. And a lot of the time, they can get distracting, and they can get overwhelming, but journaling has been that release for me that has allowed me to find clarity and success in, you know, different things that I pursued or thought about because of journaling. So I wanted to dig deep into that today and kind of share my own process and my successes with you all in an attempt to help you find the clarity and the peace that you need as well in this season, whether you're mourning the loss of a celebrity and role model, or even someone who's close to you, a family member or a friend due to COVID-19 or even something um, different from that, it's still just as impactful and something that we all have to go through and live with. Death is definitely a part of life and other struggles as well that we must learn to overcome using various methods and this is one that works for me that I hope works for you as well Um, also when preparing for this I saw a quote on social media that I do not remember fully but to paraphrase it said you know we're not meant to consume all of this grief and loss that we are seeing in real time right now social media and I will argue that just evolving media in general has connected us to so many things that are happening that we're being bombarded with news that in the past might not have been as accessible because of the interconnectivity of the evolved technology that we have today. And it's just making it really hard for us to be able to cope with everything that's going on um, from one level of the pandemic that is still running rampant and it's still very relevant in our country. So keep yourselves safe. But also the um, rampant racism, the just blatant racism that is just 
in the public eye even more so that uh, people of color and particularly black people have to deal with and then all the other things that we just can't escape in life um, health issues social issues um, financial issues like all of these are things that we're struggling with on top of these other things that are just bombarding us every day and it requires a sense of reflection and sometimes separation you have to separate yourself from everything that you're seeing in the media sometimes you even have to separate yourself from people even those who might be close to you just in order to keep your peace and keep your sanity and I found that journaling is one of the things that has helped me It is something that I have been doing, especially since the quarantine started, because I wanted to be able to reflect back on this time period and be able to say, thank you, God, for bringing us through this situation. And yes, I am a very spiritual person. So, you know, that's what my thoughts are always going to come back to is thanking God for, you know, the experience and then also for the blessing of coming out of the experience. But then also reflecting on what it is exactly we've come up against or overcame and how it is helping us in the future and so um, that in itself becomes a form of meditation because you're thinking on things that you might not always have the time to stop and really reflect on and who knows what other insight it might provide on your character your current mindset like you can be stressed out and not know it or even your overall mood and just other factors that are within ourselves that we might miss because we don't take the time to stop and notice them in the busy lives that we live and yes even in quarantine our lives are busy because we are still trying to find a sense of normalcy and productivity even if we are mostly confined to our own homes and so this is something that I have made it a habit of that has definitely helped me work out any thoughts of frustration confusion and even grief and anxiety Um, I've definitely been on the emotional roller coaster that most of us have been on because of the different things that is happening um, in the news, on the other side of the country, on the other side of the world, but even in our own backyards and within ourselves and having something reserved for you and a piece of self-care that is not external or dependent upon uh, your financial ability to do so is really therapeutic. So here's just a few of my thoughts on why you should take up journaling as well for healing and then also in the pursuit of success because that does not stop now either we are all still reaching for you know different goals and despite what might be happening externally that does not stop us from pursuing our own success in different areas and I'll go into more detail about that too so firstly um I just want to say that I am someone who is very easily distracted, especially working from home. It is easy for me to want to hop over to a personal project, whether it's just some chores around the house or something on my personal laptop with maybe even the blog or whatever. I'm easily distracted from the work I'm doing, especially if it's a project that requires a decent amount of mental um mental capacity that I'm just not ready to give I will easily allow myself to be distracted by um, an email a podcast um, a chore and one of the things that helps me overcome that is by journaling because a lot of that also comes about from random thoughts that pop up in my head and a lot of the times we just need to get those thoughts written down on the paper or typed out into an app in order to kind of organize them but then also kind of put a bookmark on them so that we don't forget them for later but I do find that 
there is symbolically a purging of random notes in my head that takes place when I journal and then there is a sense of clarity but then also peace in knowing that I can come back to this later but right now I need to focus on work and so I would encourage you if you are struggling in having you know distracting thoughts or just being scattered brain in general to just journal whatever comes to mind and it can just be a stream of consciousness just writing out everything you don't have to have good grammar you don't even need to have punctuations it's just a matter of getting these jumbled thoughts out of your head so that you can focus on the task at hand and so that's something I particularly have found successful um in my own job when I find that I cannot focus on the task at hand when I really need to be. I also think that it gives us time and space to sort through some tough decisions. Now, this isn't necessarily the type of journaling that I would do to clear my mind while working, but let's say that I am journaling at the end of the day, reflecting on the day, and let's say that I have a tough decision that needs to be made and I don't know what to do. One of the first things that people will recommend to you is to weigh the pros and cons of a situation, but have you really taken the time to really reflect on the who, what, when, where, and why of the situation? I know that you know those things, but being able to paraphrase what's going on to yourself even provides an opportunity for your mind to synthesize the entire situation and then begin to come up with some potential solutions. So these are all things that are kind of happening in the background, but you need to give yourself the mental space to do that. And by journaling, you are able to do that. And that comes along with not just making a decision, but just processing different things such as grief, such as uh, confusion, being able to better articulate what you're feeling by writing it down will get your mind working to want to provide some type of solution and you won't get that every time but it will be to the extent in which your mind can at least try to find understanding and a means to move forward so that you're not always feeling conflicted Journaling really helps you synthesize all of those emotions and then find a way to move forward, but not to forget, but just to move forward and to take action or to find some sense of um, accomplishment or conclusion. And then when it comes to, you know, just personal development, I think that journaling can be a powerful tool in keeping yourself accountable and also hopefully motivated. I know for me, at least, I have uh, 20 goals for 2020. I took this from a concept that I saw at the end of 2019. And the person titled this, I believe, on a Pinterest post, 19 in 2019. And they listed out 19 goals for themselves that they wanted to reach by the end of 2019. And so I did the exact same thing for myself for 2020 with the hopes of reaching them all by the end. I did this as well in 2019, but I didn't do the best at maintaining those goals and even documenting my progress. And so I began to journal a lot more on the progress that I was making towards my 20 goals for 2020. And that started to be therapeutic in itself as well. Because I was constantly thinking about how I could become a better person. And it wasn't added stress, but it was something that kept me rooted in what I was doing on a daily basis. I didn't feel like I was just existing. And on days where I did feel like I was just existing, I had something that brought me back to a sense of purpose. Because I had those goals to make progress towards. Being able to journal about those also helped me accountable for anything that I might have strayed from or might have forgotten about. And even when I don't meet those goals, by journaling it out, I realize that I wanted to have a more positive journaling session the next time I journaled about that goal in order to show that I am making progress. If there is a goal that you have and you feel that you're constantly missing the mark or forgetting about it or just not maintaining 
the progress that you once had, consider constantly journaling about it. And that will keep it front of mind so that you are constantly taking action to make progress as well. And I definitely found that motivating with certain things that um, are on my wish list. And at the end of this episode, I'll talk about some different methods for journaling that'll help you do that uh, more successfully and productively and I'll talk about that a little bit more too as it relates to my goals and then the last thing um, that I wanted to stress about the importance and the benefit of journaling is just the fact that it can provide um, a detailed account of an experience that you might want to recall in the future that you can't recall once enough time has passed and I just find this helpful because I am a very forgetful person and I think what would be a better example for that is one of my goals for 2020 which is to live a more holistically well life and basically you know being healthier but from a holistic standpoint so not only am I trying to eat well and not order you know fast food as often but I also want to make sure that I'm getting my sleep and that I am diving into the bible every day so that my mind is not overwhelmed by things that I see on social media instead well by listing out the details of the past bible studies that I've done will help me when I find myself regressing and turning to social media more often often remembering that a particular reading plan that I got from the Bible app was not as successful as another reading plan that I gotten from a friend will help me not to stray or be drawn to something that's not successful for me so especially when it comes to reaching your goals you want to get a detailed account of what works for you so that you're not wasting time going back to the old things and then wondering why it didn't work thinking oh hey I've done this before it'll work right no it won't but you forgot that it wasn't successful and so now (laughs) you are falling into those old habits again so that's just something that I found to be successful for me with journaling is being able to get a detailed account on my progress in different areas and also details on experiences that I might want to revisit it because I never know how it will help me so that is um, some of the benefits that I that I have seen from journaling. And I believe that it can definitely provide some type of closure and clarity when it comes to reaching for a goal, but then also trying to find healing with whatever situation you're dealing with. So let's get into some of the methods that I would recommend. So the first one that I believe I probably talked about a million times already is the app called Trello. Um, It's desktop and for your phone, but it's a project management tool, but I love using it for my personal life. So my 2020 goals has a list on my Trello personal organization board. And then within the list, I have cards dedicated to each goal. And then within the cards, I can take notes, add pictures, add links, and that just keeps everything in one place and tracking. But as I mentioned earlier, Adding a journaling component to that is what really makes it successful. And so at least once a month, I will go into each card and I'll journal some notes out talking about my progress or a new resource I found that I want to link the website to and things like that so that I can better see, you know, what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And Trello has been a great app in that instance. I also have a journaling app on my phone and there's tons of them. So you have the notes app that already comes with your phone, but then you also have other apps that you can download and I use write a day, but I've also been introduced to a few others um, that are pretty cool, but none of them are so particular or I'd say so advantageous to use over the other. You just want to find a consistent timeline in which you keep yourself held to to journal so whether it's at night every day or in the morning every day but just finding the routine or the habit of journaling is just therapeutic in itself and that's something that you should consider because you can easily 
search for old journal entries use hashtags add photos things like that that you can't do with a normal notebook but a notebook is still going to be probably the number one choice for a lot of people because it's familiar and sometimes typing something out and actually handwriting it out makes a big difference and you just have to find which one is better for you but having a paper notebook as well or a paper journal will allow you to better synthesize your thoughts and really collect your thoughts when you have to take the time to write out the sentences and try to build coherent statements so that is another great method tried and true that will never go away Um, and I will also recommend even google docs and I just love that option because it's also mobily accessible but on your desktop as well You don't have to, you know, rewrite or share a copy. You have that real-time, up-to-date version of your journal, your prayer, whatever you want to call it, um, always there and something that is searchable and super organized if you want to take that to the next level. Find some kind of way to journal and really reflect on where you're at in life right now, especially since collectively across the globe we are in an interesting time that I think needs to be documented and needs to be reflected on uh, because if we are fortunate enough to be a part of (laughs) the human race that makes it to the other side of this pandemic I think there is a lesson to be learned and some things that must be shared but we have to be able to recall those things and those details and those lessons learned through journaling through that healing process and passing it along to the next generation so that the mistakes we made today cannot be made again and the mistakes we made today can help us grow as ourselves. So I hope that this was a good episode as we return back to the podcast. Uh, Do still look out for those weekly updates and thank you for sitting through this longer episode but I'm sure that it will be a Huge help if you just take the time to try to journal just a few minutes every day and see how that helps your overall well-being, your mental clarity, and um, just your ability to articulate better because you are taking that time to articulate some ideas for yourself. Thank you again for tuning in. Um, Follow me on social media and let's continue this conversation. Tell me about your favorite journaling topics and your favorite journaling resources apps um what do you do to really find clarity and to heal and to pursue your dreams i want to hear it you can find me on facebook at the b sheet just facebook.com slash the b sheet you can also follow me on instagram and i do dabble in twitter a little bit at the same handle as always you can check out my blog for blog posts on different topics including this one at bchicu.org and i just appreciate you sharing this little space with me in the internet and i will see you next week